Hi there, I'm Marcin Kuczynski, CEO of Malwarebytes. I'm joined by Michael Osterman, President of Osterman Research, and today we're going to talk about one of the biggest threats facing uh, maybe humanity, but definitely businesses, and that's <laughs> ransomware. Thanks for joining me, Michael. It's a pleasure to be here. Tell, tell me a little bit about the survey. Well, we surveyed 540 people in four geographies, the United States, Canada, Germany, and the United Kingdom. And we wanted to talk to higher level people within those companies. So we spoke to CISOs, IT directors, uh, security directors, people who were knowledgeable about the kinds of security breaches that their organizations had experienced, people who had to deal with it on a daily basis and so forth. And so how many, how many endpoints were actually covered by that survey? Uh, actually, almost, almost three million. It wow. was about 2.94 million uh, endpoints yeah, in, so quite in a, total. Quite a significant, uh, quite a significant audience, a right? A big slice of, of so, the world. So, yeah. tell me a little bit about the, the top findings that you uh, okay. that you had. One of the fundamental uh, findings we we found is that over eighty percent of organizations had encountered some sort of security breach, whether it was malware infiltration through phishing, uh, you know, brute force hacking, what have you. We found that almost forty percent of organizations had been the victim of ransomware, and basically a successful ransomware attack that had infected one or more endpoints in the company. Wow. So, so that's the, the top level international findings. Let's, let's just drill down into the U.S. Basically, we found that about 80% of U.S. companies had been attacked. Uh, so you know, this is a very significant problem. And we spoke to a lot of very large companies, and we spoke to companies really you know, that were small, mid-sized, and large. So this is essentially a universal problem, uh, not limited to very large companies. It's, it's basically impacting everybody out there. One of the more interesting findings is that the United States was really one of the most attacked countries uh, among the four geographies that we surveyed. That, that's interesting. What, what, why do you think that is? I think part of the reason is that there's so much information in the United States. Uh, we have people that are using their own devices, they're using corporate devices and so forth. Also, privacy regulations in the United States don't tend to be as strict as they are in other countries. And so there's a lot of information that's not as protected as it needs to be. A lot of endpoints that aren't as protected and so forth. So we have a lot of health records that are available through a variety of healthcare organizations. We have a lot of personally identifiable information, uh, personal financial information and so forth, and a lot of that is, is not protected as well as it is in other countries. And so it's, it's the kind of information that a cyber criminal can, um, can attack, uh, can extract through either through malware or can uh, hold somebody ransom through ransomware. One of the more surprising findings from the research is that healthcare organizations and financial services organizations were actually the most attacked with ransomware, uh, well above the average of 39% for all of the industries we surveyed. Can you talk a little bit about what the ransomware penetration rate is actually for, for the audience? Yeah, overall it was 39%. So, you know, across the board, across all of the industries that we surveyed, and we certainly categorized about 15 different industries, um, we found that, that the average was 39%. Healthcare was 53%, financial services was 51%. So, well above the average. Yeah, sure. Uh, look, Let's transition to a little bit, a little bit about uh, the targets. So, so who are the bad guys actually going after in these industries and and and, and others? I mean, other industries. Yeah, it's it, it tends the market is, is sort of bifurcating in a way. Uh, there's a lot of low-level ransomware that goes after anybody, but there's a lot of ransomware that goes after C-level executives, uh, other senior executives in the company, because they tend to have the most valuable information, and they're most likely to pay because they need that information back. So if it's encrypted, if they don't have access to it, maybe through a recent backup, then they're much more likely to pay than the average lower-level employee sure. who maybe can have their machine re-imaged and they, they won't lose a tremendous amount of valuable data. Yeah, one of, one of the things that really impressed me, maybe impresses the wrong word, is the, the transition from just a cons ransomware being a consumer problem, you know, affecting my, my grandmother, my mother, mm -hmm. uh, my, my stepdad, moving into the enterprise, and, and that's been a... With the with the results of the survey, I mean, clearly a successful transition. Oh, very much so. Yeah, yeah it's it's and it's. I, I think we're going to see more of that in the future. Uh, just like we saw phishing go into more spear phishing and CEO fraud, I think we'll see the same kind of thing with ransomware. Yeah, sure. Let's talk about how the ransomware is getting in. Can Can you tell me what the survey talks uh, says about the ingress points for the actual ransomware itself? Yeah, we actually looked at two different types of ingress points. We looked at the physical platform itself, and then the applications that were running on those platforms. We found. Uh, you know, far and away that the desktop computer was, uh, was the most likely point for uh, ransomware to enter an organization, uh, much more so in the United States and in Germany, uh, but also you know, really across the board. Desktop computers were the primary way that they got in. Uh, laptops were a primary way in the United States, much more so than, than in other countries. In terms of the applications, uh, email was far and away the most common way that, that ransomware would enter, uh, either through a link in a, a malicious email or through some sort of an attachment that people would open and then infect their endpoint. 
Well, as they say, the, the deed is done on the endpoint. So, yes. you know, email being a huge vector of, of, of attack, but, but the actual ransomware, of course, is, is working on the endpoint and having good endpoint uh, protection is, is really important. Absolutely. Ransomware, big problem for businesses. How, how, does that, how is it actually impacting those businesses? Well, it impacts them in a variety of ways. Uh, what we found is that a large proportion of businesses actually had to shut down for a while. Wow. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it depends on... And these are businesses that you and I use. Oh, absolutely, yes. Uh, and it depends to a large extent on you know, how widespread the infection is. Yep. We found that in some organizations the, the spread was fairly minimal. In some organizations it spread to every endpoint. We found in the UK, for example, that the most severe ransomware attacks had actually impacted 10% of uh, organizations in terms of, of every endpoint being infected. So a lot of businesses had to shut down for a while until they remediated the, the ransomware attack. Uh, pro personal productivity was lost, data was lost in many cases. So that, that's were, a bad day for that IT that's, team. That's a very bad day. It's a very bad you're night for them Sipping on your well. coffee and all of a sudden you're pulling <laughs> plugs from the wall, right? Yes, so, absolutely. To make sure that... <laughs> so <laughs> before we, we wrap up, I'd like to talk a little bit about the, the preparedness, right? So we just talked about pulling plugs out of the wall. Uh, what, what did the survey show us about how businesses are actually approaching the threat of ransomware? Well, there's a variety of approaches. Uh, a lot of businesses today will try to remediate ransomware through a recent backup. Uh, yep. It's not a very good way to do it because you're going to lose data no matter what. There's going to be some, some critical data that's lost between the time of the last backup sure. and, and the time of re-imaging the machine. Uh, a lot of organizations are using anti-ransomware technologies, but not very many at this point. Uh, we see a growing number of those, but, but there aren't really many at this point. Well, backup seems to be the silver bullet, but the, the ability to, to go into those backups and make sure you can get a, a clean restore, I mean, that's a very difficult task, especially on a magnitude of, of endpoints, right? Absolutely. It's, it's not only difficult, it's time consuming. And you've not only got the cost of IT that has to go and re-image all of the machines, you've got people sitting idle until that happens. So, Michael, thank you uh, for taking uh, the time to walk us through the survey and the, and the findings. They're, they're very, very interesting and, and really show the prevalence of ransomware in businesses, not just on, on the consumer side, to the point where, you know, Malwarebytes has actually had to build an a, a ran, anti-ransomware product. That's how prevalent the, the issue is. So, thanks again. Really appreciate it. Is there anything else you want to tell the audience? Yes, we'll be hosting a webinar with Malwarebytes on August 10th. Uh, we'd like to invite everybody to come. Uh, we'll be going through in depth in the into the survey results and uh, we'll be answering any questions that you have at that point. If you would like to download a copy of the survey reports that we did as part of this research, you can do that from the Malwarebytes press room. Cool, well thank you uh, Michael, uh, President of Osterman Research. Thank you very much.